Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of your Republican Party from the great state of Nevada, Mr. Michael McDonald. How we doing, Nevada? Don't bother sitting down, I'm gonna make this real quick because I got a very special guest for you. When we started rebuilding Nevada, Republican Party, it was very important we all came together and that entitled every one of you. You made this happen. You are the warriors that fight for our president every day. You are the one that have to make sure that we never surrender to the message the president puts out. Never back down. Let them do what they want to see on the other side, but the truth will be heard, and it'll be heard by you. Never stop that. We have a man who is tirelessly fighting for this country. He has made America safe again. He has made America great again. And more importantly, Nevada, you know this. He came for our convention when he was our nominee on a promise made on his Air Force jet to me. And he lived up to that promise at his own sacrifice. When he became president, he showed the human nature. October 1st was one of the worst disasters we've ever seen in America. I lost three friends that day and countless more in the hospital. He immediately came out with the First Lady to heal us to make sure he knew the evil would never, ever darken our doorstep again as long as he was president. <laughs> oh, and make no doubt about it. You have a president who keeps his promise. Politicians don't keep their promises. Businessmen keep their promises. Our president keeps his promise. He promised me in September I'll be out to fight for Dean Heller, our great senior senator. And I'll tell you what, he followed through on that promise. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the greatest president of America, Mr. Donald J. Trump. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. I want to thank Michael. He's done a great job. He is really, he's real. I looked at some numbers before. They're looking awfully good, and I give a lot of that attribution to Michael. He has been a wonderful leader in this great state that we love. I want to congratulate Senator Dean Heller on his uh, victory. And he's going to do a tremendous job. He's going to be a continuation of a great senator. He's, uh, he's been with me all the way once we got elected. I mean, I must tell you, he's a little, bit, a little bit shaky at the beginning, but that was when there were a lot of people running. But once we got in there, he's been rock solid, and he's been great, and he's going to do a job. And he cut your taxes, and nobody fought harder to cut taxes than Dean Heller, I will tell you that. Your great Attorney General is here, Adam Laxalt. And he's running against Shady Steve. And, uh, well, you know, if you think of the names, right? If you think, because it's always good to sort of, if you can think of something like that. But 
but he's going to win this race so easily, I really believe, right? Where's Adam? Where is Adam? Where's Adam? Come on, come on up here, fellas. Come on up here. Dean, come on up, Dean. so fantastic. And he's been like a supporter of mine for a long time. He is a very intense individual, like the, that's the bloodlines, you know, from this family. And boy, that father was good. He was tough. He was tough. There's only one difference. Danny's even tougher. Danny Tarkanian. Danny, come on. Great team player, Danny. He's a really great team player. And Dean and myself, we really appreciate what he did. And he's going to go in there and he's going to win in that third congressional district. Right, Danny? Going to be there for a long time. I also want to, obviously, welcome all of our Republican Party delegates. You've been here and working and striving, and look what happened. Look what happened, right? You really are. You're the heart and soul of the party. And uh, this is a great state. This is a state that is going to be with us and has always been with us. And we love, and we love the people. I'm here a lot. Uh, we have a uh, great development down the road, but now I don't think about that anymore, right? I don't think about it anymore. But I, I just wanted to go because I don't think anybody's come close to doing this. You know, you read the fake news, it's fake and disgraceful, and they don't talk about it. Uh, I read a story in the New York Times recently about things that we do and they say we didn't, or it's just horrible. I want to say some of the things, because I don't believe any administration, any president, has come even close to doing what we've done in the first 500 days. And I won't even mention North Korea in that 500 days. I won't even mention it. But that was a great, I mean, we have a good chemistry together. Kim Jong-un. We have a great chairman, Kim. We have a great chemistry. And we're well on our way. You know, we signed an agreement. It said we will begin the immediate denuclearization, okay, of North Korea. It says that uh, we already got back the hostages, and I saw it today. Well, Obama got back hostages too. Yeah, he paid 1.8 billion to get them back. Okay. They didn't say that in the New York Times. They don't say that. They said, but Obama got them back too. Yeah, but he a little bit different. He, they gave him a billion eight in green. Can you believe this? In cash. How do, you, how do you do that as president? How do you do that? But we also, uh, you know, when I was campaigning, people would come to me, and, and with tears in their eyes, they'd say, would it be possible to get back the remains of our father? Would it be possible to get back the remains of family members that died in the Korean War? I said, I don't exactly have a great relationship over there. This was before the election. I said, you know, that's not sounding like an easy one, but I'll tell you what, I'll try. And as we're negotiating different points, the other day in Singapore, I asked Chairman Kim, would it be possible to do that? The last thing I asked, I said, do you mind, because I have many people that have written and called and spoken to me, would I be able to get the remains back of all those great heroes that we had from so many years ago? And he said, I will do that. And you probably read, they've already done 200 people, which is so good. So good.
Thank you very much. Thank you. That's so nice. And, and remember, uh, just recently I got a call from the Prime Minister of Japan, Prime Minister Abe. And Japan is so thankful. There's no rockets flying over Japan. You know, they were flying right over Japan. And uh, they weren't so happy. And, you know, the Japanese are great warriors. They're great warriors. And that was not a good thing. And, and they're so happy that they don't have that. They were having rockets, and they were testing rockets. You haven't had a rocket or tests in seven months, eight months, long time now. It used to be every week would have another nuclear test, a rocket test. Uh, they've blown up their nuclear site, their testing site. They've uh, gotten rid of, in the process of getting rid of their engine site for ballistic missiles. A lot. We're, we're just we're developing a, a very special kind of a situation where hopefully uh, in the future, because you look at locationally, you look at it from any standpoint, North Korea has tremendous potential. Chairman Kim sees that. And a lot of tremendous things are going to happen. We were really helped by South Korea, President Moon. We were tremendously helped by Japan. We were really helped also by President Xi of China with the border. Now we have to work on our trade with China because it's been, uh, it's been very tough on our country for very many years. Our presidents did nothing about it. And we probably lost last year $500 billion in trade to China. Think of it, $500 billion. So we've started a process, and I think that'll work out with China, because we have a very good relationship with the President. With President Xi, he's incredible. So I think that'll work out. We're working on a NAFTA deal. A NAFTA's been a disaster for us. You know, Mexico makes over $100 billion a year. It's hard to believe. It's, you know, you say these numbers, $100 billion, not trillion, not $100 billion, not million, fortunately. Not trillion, very fortunately, but think of it. So $100 billion a year we lose on trade with Mexico. On top of that, they have a tax, a VAT tax at 17% that we don't have. So they make our cars. A lot of car companies went there, and they send them back over to the border at virtually no tax. And we lost a tremendous amount. Uh, now they make a big percentage of our cars. It's not fair. So we're renegotiating NAFTA. And I think when it's finished, it's going to be a, a fair, it's got to be a fair deal. It's got to be fair. We can't do this any longer. We can't do it any longer. And Canada charges us 275% tariff on dairy products going into Canada. It's ridiculous. And then they act like, you know, it's like uh, you probably read over the last couple of weeks with the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, who's a nice guy. But we can't have it. We can't have it. 275% tariff, and we can't have it. Because basically, that's a barrier. They say, we don't want your product. They tell the farmers up in Wisconsin and all of the different places, we don't want your product. 275 is like having a barrier, of which they do have barriers, and which many other countries have barriers. So we're working on Canada. We're working on Mexico. We're working on the European Union. We're working on China. And everybody now is coming back. Have you been seeing what's going on with our steel industry? We put steel tariffs on. U.S. Steel is now building six plants or expanding. <laughs> a steel company today announced a $500 million plant. And uh, that's the first plant that's been built in many, many years. It's a long time. Uh, the steel industry is starting. And we need steel in this country. We need steel, including for national defense. We have to have steel. So a lot of things are happening. The trade stuff is coming along, just starting. Uh, but it's going to happen because, you know, we're the piggy bank that everybody likes to rob from, they like to steal from. And unfortunately, and we have great allies, great friends, we protect them for a very small cost. Uh, if you look at NATO, we protect them for a tiny fraction of what it would cost. Uh, which is unfair also, but we won't even get into that. We're having a meeting in July. We'll talk about it. But in so many ways, our country has taken advantage of, and we're settling it up, and we're going to all be friends. We're going to all be happy, but we have to do these things. So uh, with the European Union, we're losing last year $151 billion. $151 billion. They don't want our farm products. They tax our cars very heavily and really don't want them. They really have a barrier. 
And yet we take in Mercedes and we take in BMWs by the millions. And it's not fair. It's not fair. And we charge them almost nothing. And it's not fair. So when they charge us that, we have to say respectfully, I'm sorry, but you know, we're going to have to tax your cars if you're taxing everything else. And if you're not going to take our farmers' products, we make the greatest products in so many different ways, and they don't want them. And that's okay, but then you're going to have to pay. You just can't come in and do that. We can't lose $151 billion with the European Union. We can't lose $100 billion with Mexico. So the trade deals are actually coming in. And honestly, they're talking. You know, when they have the tariff like that put on, they want to talk. They didn't talk to Bush. They didn't talk to Obama. President Obama, they said, we're not going to talk to you about trade. Why would we talk to you? And they said, OK, great. Let's leave it for Trump. Let's leave North Korea for Trump. Let's leave trade for Trump. Let's leave immigration for Trump. We'll leave it for Trump. They left us a lot, but I'm actually having a good time. Thank you. I'm actually having a good time. We're doing a job. And on immigration, we have to be very strong. I mean, everybody sees, but this is the same site that Obama had, that Bush had, same site, it's the same thing. In fact, they said, look at this site, look at President Trump, look at this picture. Excuse me. It was 2014, it was President Obama, okay? Our people are actually doing a very good job handling a very difficult situation. But this is a problem that should have been solved years ago. So we're working very hard. The fact is, we need more Republicans, because the Democrats are obstructionists. They won't vote. They're total obstructionists. They don't want to vote. Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, they just want they want to use the issue, and I like the issue for election, too. Our issue is strong borders, no crime. Their issue is open borders, let MS-13 all over our country. That's what's going to happen if you listen to them. So we're being very, very tough at the border. In fact, until just recently, we had a 70-year low coming through. And by the way, we want people to come into our country, but we want them to come in for merit, through merit. We want a merit-based system so they can help us. You know, we have tremendous numbers of companies coming in. We have a 3.8 unemployment number, which nobody thought was even possible. And we have a 3.8. We need people to come in. But they have to be people that love this country, can love our country, and can really help us to make America great again, which is what we're doing way ahead of schedule. So since Election Day, we've created — and this is hard to believe, because nobody uh, — the news back there — fake news. <laughs> if I would have said this during the campaign, We've created 3.4 million new jobs since Election Day, 3.4. If I would have said that during the campaign prior to the election, without the numbers, they would have said, you have to be kidding. How about our GDP numbers? How about that? I mean, even more so. Unimport think of this. Unemployment claims are at a 44-year low as of last year. Unemployment for African Americans is the lowest level in history. Remember, I used to say at the rallies, what do you have to lose? I meant it. What do you have to lose? Because they always went with — African Americans always voted, for the most part, for Democrats. And I'm reading tremendous crime, bad education, bad this, bad that, not safe, everything better. I've read like 10 different points income levels, home ownership levels, everything. And I said, vote for me. What do you have to lose, remember? <laughs> and they were smart. We did very well. We did very well. Those numbers went up, up plenty, and up enough so we won the election. And now we have the African American — think of it — African American unemployment, the lowest in the history of our country. Hispanic — any Hispanics in the audience, perhaps? Hispanic. <laughs> Unemployment 
the lowest in the history of our country. <laughs> Women, unemployment, the lowest in 21 years, and shortly it will be the lowest in the history of our country, but the lowest in 21 years. That's down to 3.6 percent. Nobody would believe the numbers. Over 3 million people recently got off food stamps because we're doing so well. That's a big number. And after years of stagnation and even going down, people were making more money, relatively speaking, 20 years ago than they would make two years ago. And after years of stagnation, wages are rising again, and jobs are looking for people. Small business optimism has reached an all-time high. It's the highest it's ever been recorded. We've signed the biggest tax cut and reform in the history of our country. That's a big one. That was where Dean and — I'll tell you, Dean really helped. He was in there fighting hard for us. You were fighting hard. That was not easy, was it, huh? That was not easy. But Dean Heller, we all uh, — and, and I have to tell you, his opponent wants to raise taxes. She wants to raise taxes. Think of it. I mean, it's, uh, it's ridiculous. It's, should I mention her name, or should I not? Huh? I have a great nickname for her, actually, but I'm not going to. No, we shouldn't do it. All right, I won't do it. Wacky Jackie <laughs> has. You don't want her. You don't want her as your senator. You don't want her as your senator. Now that name didn't come from me. That's a name that people have known because. People that know her, that's what they call her, Wacky Jackie. That's what you want for your senator? She wants to raise taxes. And I think somebody said she's in Nevada right now campaigning with Pocahontas. She's campaigning with Elizabeth Warren, sometimes referred to affectionately, of course, as Pocahontas. They wanted me to apologize. No. I did, though. I did. I did apologize to Pocahontas. I apologize. <laughs> to the memory of Pocahontas, I apologize. No. Wacky Jackie is campaigning with Pocahontas. You believe this? In your state. And they don't know how to say Nevada. They don't know how to say it. She called it Nevada. Okay, so when you see that, that's not the senator you want. And you know, your senator has to deal with your president, and your president loves the state. But I'm not increasing taxes. You have a Democratic Party. It's really a Democrat. I don't like the word democratic, because it's not a democratic. Do you ever notice the way everyone calls it the Democratic Party? It's not Democratic. It's called the Democrat Party. It really is. And it doesn't flow as easily. You know, it doesn't. When you speak, it sounds nicer, Democratic Party. But, you know, we're talking about people that want tax increases. They want open borders. They got to have open borders. They want people coming in. You look at MS-13. We take them out of this country by the thousands. They're flowing. We take them out by the thousands. And we have the toughest border you can have, considering the laws are the worst in the whole country. Our immigration laws are a laughing stock all over the world. We're the only people. People walk in, they put a foot in, uh, please, would you like to register? <laughs> Other countries, they say, get the hell out of here. They, they do that. They have to do that. We say, you know, they want to hire now 5,000 more judges so that a person puts the toe on the land that we have to go to trial. This is crazy what we're doing. I don't want judges. I want Border Patrol. I want ICE. We don't want judges. 
And the problem is, and I've said it, you know, we have great people in the House, Republicans. We get the tax bill. We didn't get one vote from Democrats in terms of the Senate, and I guess in terms of the House, we get a vote. And we cut taxes massively. And these companies that are all moving back now, Chrysler's coming back. There are so many companies are coming back. That's why we do need jobs, and that's why we do have to get them in America. But we need jobs because we have all the companies. We have so much happening. They're coming to Ohio. They're coming to your state. They're coming to Pennsylvania. They're coming all over. It's incredible to see what's going on. But we have to do it in the right way. We have to have strong borders. You cannot ever allow a statement. For instance, if I got up here today and said, we want everybody to come, we want to take care of everybody, you will, let me tell you what would happen if I said that. Now, they'll put it on that, that, where they won't do, and they'll say, Trump said, we want everybody to come. These are the most dishonest people, not all of them, but many of them. They are among the most dishonest people on earth. But if we did that, everybody come. If we did that, you would have, you're right, the word is overrun. We will have millions and millions of people pouring through our country with all of the problems that would cause, with crime and schools. And you would have millions. All I have to do is say, yes, we want to take care of everybody. We want everybody to come. Do what you want to do. Even if they saw weakness, if they see any weakness, they will come by the millions. We have to have strong borders. We're going to have the wall. We're going to have the wall. We've already started it. We've already started it. You know, we've started it in San Diego. Now, we're going to have the wall, and we started it. We have $1.6 billion. We've started it. We're fixing it, and we're building new, and we're starting it. But, uh, and we'll build it for a lot less money than these people think. A lot less money. But we're getting the wall built, and uh, we're going now for our second portion. And it's brutal dealing with the Democrats. They want to do nothing. Just so you understand, you're delegates, you know what's going on. You're political people. You love the world, the politics. Sometimes you probably go home and say, why do I like it? <laughs> but, but when you think about it, we're dealing with a group of people that don't want to approve every, anything. If I, if I said, as an example, if we gave them everything they wanted, they would say, don't approve it. Because they think immigration is being weak on the border, which is therefore allowing tremendous crime to come into our country. They think that that's a good issue for them. I don't think being weak on the border, being pathetically weak on the border, I don't think that's a good issue. I may be wrong. I think I got elected largely because we are strong on the border. I really believe it. So we signed the tax bill, and the tax bill was, the cut was great. But we also got Anwar, which is one of the great sites in the world for energy. And we got rid of the Obamacare disastrous individual mandate where you pay a fortune for the privilege of not paying for health insurance. This is one of the great disasters, the individual mandate, gone. Has anybody realized that? Has anybody was where they use it where you pay a lot of money for the privilege of not paying? Okay? And you get no health care. And we just opened with our great Labor Secretary, Department of Labor, Cooperative and Association Healthcare. It's going to be many of the people in this room are going to be buying it. It's going to be low cost, phenomenal, much better than Obamacare. And we're doing more in another two weeks, different forms of health care. And Obamacare is now going up. Every time you see an increase, that's Obamacare. And Obamacare is on its last legs. It's almost finished. Don't forget, I had it finished. Did we have it? It was done. Repeal and replace Obamacare. It was done until early in the morning. A man walked in, and he said, thumbs down, thumbs down. That was not good. And nobody knew he was going to do that. He campaigned on repeal and replace. He campaigned for years. Repeal and replace. 
repeal and replace. Nobody talked to him. Nobody needed to. It was a done deal. And then he walked in, thumbs down. It's all right, because we've essentially gutted it anyway. And we now have really good stuff coming. And just remember, if you see your numbers go up for those that are remaining, it's uh, the Democrats' fault. And, and by the way, immigration, it's the Democrats' fault. We won't get one vote. I'm telling you, if we gave them every single thing they want, they will say, we don't want it. It's pure obstruction. Remember their word, resist. Resist is their word. Do you remember what our word is? Huh? Right? Lots, lots of different words, but ours is like, approve, get it done. Get it done. Their word is resist. They want to resist everything. They think that's going to help them get into office. I don't think so. Especially when it comes to raising taxes, when it comes to having weak borders and crime, and when it comes to bad health care. They have horrible health care. So that's what the story is. But Anwar, and we got rid of the individual mandate. Uh, Obamacare, you're going to look at it. It's almost now a thing of the past. Should have happened a few months ago, uh, but we had a little surprise. So we were given a little early morning surprise by one of our own. One of the biggest things we've done is the record number of we've really knocked out regulations at a number that nobody can believe. We've taken out more regulations, more regulations than any president in any one of their terms, for full terms. We've approved the Keystone and the Dakota Access Pipelines. We've ended the war on energy, and we've ended the war on clean coal, one of our great assets. We've withdrawn from the job-killing and unbelievably expensive Paris Climate Accord. That was a beauty. That was a beauty. That was going to cost us more money than anybody would have ever believed. We've signed landmark accountability legislation for the VA, where you're accountable now if you do a bad job. We fire you. And two weeks ago, we passed Choice, VA Choice, where rather than waiting online for weeks and weeks and dying, you know, you had people went in, they're moderately, they have a minor problem. They end up, it takes so long, they end up terminal. Now they go see a doctor and we pay for the doctor. These are our great veterans. It's called VA Choice. They've been trying to get, they've been trying to get accountability for 40 years. They've been trying to get VA choice from the beginning. And, you know, before I knew much about the Veterans Administration in terms of choice, I said, why don't they use choice? I thought it was my idea. I said, oh, I'm so smart. What a great idea. I went to the group. They said, yes, sir, we've been trying to get that for 35 years. So that's all right. But I knew how to get it. We got it now. They've been trying for 35 years. We secured a record $700 billion, and then next year, $716 billion to bring our military to the highest level it has ever been. We need it. We confirmed more circuit court judges than any other new administration, and we will set the all-time record with judges, including our great new Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch. We withdrew from the horrible one-sided Iran deal, and that's going to turn out to be very good. That was one of the great embarrassments. And we moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. We're renegotiating all of those trade deals that I told you about. We're working with China. We're working with all of those countries where it's so one-sided. And all of that will work out 100 percent. But we cannot be taken advantage of any longer as a country. We're not doing it.
We're getting rid of sanctuary cities. We're getting rid of unsafe places. We're protecting your Second Amendment. Have to protect it. Ninety-five percent of American manufacturers just announced that this is in the history of the chart, which they think is 28 years old. They've been doing this for 28 years. In history, it's the highest history of uh, they love what's going on. Let me put it this way. They approve what we're doing. It's the highest approval rating that this country has ever had by the people that create jobs, namely the manufacturers. Just came in. And 100 utility companies have lowered their prices because of our business tax cuts and the savings to America. And Americans are going to be over $3 billion. Think of that. For farmers and for small businesses, we have eliminated the estate tax. So you can leave your farm, your business, to the people you love, and they won't have to go bust borrowing money so they can pay the estate tax. And we have so many other things that we've done and so many other things that we're doing. We're very proud of it. We could not have done it without you. It's been an incredible journey for all of us. We started out saying we were going to do this and that. Nobody had any idea we'd be able to do so much so soon. In a very short period of time, all those things have been done, or they're very close to being done, but most of them have been done. A lot of them have just great starts. You know, you have to start. And I can tell you that on trade. You're going to see things happen over the next, over the coming months that are going to really uh, shock you. Because for so many years, we felt so badly. You know, our jobs have been taken. Our, our companies have been just taken like we're a bunch of babies. Let's take the company. Let's close up the car company. Let's fire everybody. Let's move the company to another country. And then we'll sell back cars right into America. We won't pay tax. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. They're gone. So. I just want to — this is a very special group, and I know so many of you because we campaigned together. But I just want to thank everybody there. If you've been my friends, and you've really been loyal, you've been strong. I want to say to Adam, good luck. you got a, a tough race, but he's a tough cookie. He's going to get it done. He's going to get it done, because he knows how to get things done. I want to say to Dean, look, uh, He's done so well that I can't imagine anything bad happening. But you have to always fight hard. You have to be a little bit like, you know, be careful. You never know. You just can't let Wacky Jackie do it. You can't go <laughs> Remember, a vote for her is a vote for Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. So it's very simple. Just remember, a vote for her is a vote for taxes going way up. Your taxes that you've cut way down are going to go way up. They're going to give you all sorts of false promises. Your taxes are going way up. There's no doubt. They, Nancy Pelosi was caught three weeks ago. Did you hear her? Where she was saying, forget about the crumbs. It's been used too much. But it is. It's a lot of money for people. $2,000, $3,000, more than that. But so I don't even talk about the crumbs. But three weeks ago, she was talking about she wants to raise everybody's taxes. OK? I don't think so. Somehow, that doesn't play very well. But a vote for her is a vote for increased taxes, weak, weak borders. It's really a vote for crime. It's a vote to get rid of police officers. It's a vote to get rid of ICE. They want to get rid of ICE. Do you know how good ICE is? These are the toughest people. You know, in Long Island, we have towns where they have a lot of the MS-13. And the thing they respect is toughness. They don't respect, like, if you're the number one student in your class. They don't respect that. They respect toughness. Our ICE people are so tough. They're much tougher than the MS-13 people. And they respect our ICE people. And these guys go in with the paddy wagons. 
and they grab them, and they put them in, and they take them out, and we get them the hell out of our country, and we put them, in some cases, in jail. They're killing people. And they don't kill them with guns. You know, you hear so much about guns. They kill them with knives because they cut them into little pieces because it's much more painful. They're taking beautiful young women off the street. You know, the father and the mother, two of them. They had a daughter, two daughters, killed so violently by MS-13. Cut up, cut up, not shot. Cut up because it's more painful. These are sick, evil people. I called them animals, and people said, oh, that's a terrible thing to say. No, they said, that's a terrible thing. Nancy Pelosi said, that's a terrible thing to say. She was defending MS-13. So a vote for Jackie is a vote for Nancy Pelosi. It's a vote for Schumer, and it's a vote for all of the problems that they bring. And I don't think you want that. You have an outstanding man in Dean Heller. And I know, and I've been on both sides of him, and I want to tell you, he's a tough cookie. He's a tough cookie. And we want him on our side. So I'm just going to, I'll be back a lot. But I'm just telling you, I'm leaving now. They got me making like four speeches. You believe this? You know? I said, where do you want me to go? Well, sir, you're making a speech here, then there, then there, then you're doing two roundtables. I said, what's this all about? But I will be back a lot. It's an incredible state with incredible friends. I have a great friend of mine, Mr. and Mrs. Phil Ruffin, are here today. He's a fantastic man, fantastic businessman, one of the most successful businessmen in the country. But I'm going to go, and I will be back a lot, because we're going to be fighting really hard for Danny, for Adam, and for Dean, and for others, and for others. And I just want to thank you for your incredible support. You have been there from the day I announced that I was going to run for president. You've been there. So I want to thank you. Thank you very much, Nevada. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nevada, we love you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back a lot. Come on up. Try something.